Okay then my friends, so I'm here on Dartpad and we're going to start things off by just making a few variables with different values, playing around with those values and printing a few things to the console over here. So then first of all, you're going to notice this example code when you first visit Dartpad, which is just a function called main with this void keyword in front of it. And inside this function, we've got a simple loop which prints the word hello to the console five times. So first of all, this main function right here is a required function whenever we create an application using Dart. This is the function that Dart's going to look for when we run the code. And it's going to fire this function automatically to basically kickstart the application. Don't worry too much about this void keyword right here before the function. We'll talk more about what that means later in the series. Now, to run the code in Dartpad, we just need to hit this run button, and then after a couple of seconds, we should see the word hello printed to the console over here several times. All right, cool. So that's all working. Now let's get rid of this for loop, but make sure you don't delete the main function because remember, that is a required function for all Dart applications. So, what I want to do first of all then is start with the very basics, right? And make a few variables and play around with those values inside. Those variables. Now, there's a few different ways we can actually create variables in Darts. The first way is to use the var keyword and then the name of the variable, for example, name, and then we can set it equal to a value. Now, that value can be any type of data, a string, Boolean, an integer, something else entirely. So I could set this to be the string Mario, right? And now, if we wanted to print this variable value to the console, we can just use the built in print function to do that. We just say print and then invoke it and we pass in the variable as an argument. Now, if we run this, we should eventually see the value of that variable Mario printed to the console. All right, cool. So now we've given this variable a value, which is of type string. And that means in the future, this variable can only ever be a string, not an integer, not a Boolean, not any other type of data. So if I try to set this name variable later on to be 15, for example, I'm going to get an error. And we should see some error feedback down in the bottom right of Dartpad. Now, it might take a few seconds for that to appear. Sometimes it's a little bit slow. But right here, it should say that we cannot assign a value of type int to a variable of type string, right? So we're not allowed to change the type of data in a variable once it's been initialized. We can, however, change the value to a different string, like Luigi, for example, it's only the data type that cannot change. And just as a quick aside, when you're using Dart, you always need to end your statements with a semicolon, okay? It's not optional like in JavaScript, it's required. And if you don't add them on, you're gonna see a little error. All right, so that's how we create variables using the var keyword, but we can also create them using two other keywords, final and const. So let's make a new variable and this time let's use the final keyword instead of var to declare it. And I'm going to call this variable age and I will set it equal to 25. Now then, when we use this final keyword, we're essentially saying, look, when we give this variable a value, that will be its final value. It cannot change thereafter. So if I try to now say age is equal to 26, then it won't let me do that because we use that final keyword. You can also do something similar with the const keyword. We could create a new variable by saying const, and we'll call this one is open, and maybe set that equal to true, which is a Boolean value, right? And now, just like when we use the final keyword, when we use const to create a variable, we're saying that this value should be a constant and can't ever be changed. So if I now try to change is open to false instead, then I'm going to get an error because we can't change constants much like final. So then, if we have final and const that seem to both do the same thing, which one should we be using? Well, there is a small difference between them. When we create a variable using the final keyword, that variable becomes a runtime constant. But when we create a variable using the const keyword, the variable becomes a compile time constant. So we typically use final when we don't know what a value will be at compile time, for example. If we need to fetch some data and store it in a variable, or if the value of a variable depends on the return value of some other function, then we might use the final keyword, right? So we'd use const when we do know the value of a variable at compile time, and that's going to be set in stone from the very beginning, all right? So now we've seen how to create variables in Dart, I want to quickly go through a few more basic things like math operations and string interpolation.
But just really quickly before we do that, you're going to see these different warnings down here and also this bit of information as well. And we'll also see this bit underscored with blue and blue over here. And then we have a yellow underline here and yellow underline here. So I just want to quickly go over what those mean in Dartpad. So whenever we get an error in Dartpad, for example, if I try to change is open again to be false, oops, then that error is going to be a red line like this and we can see the error over here now when we get some kind of warning it's going to be yellow underline and we should see that warning over on the right so if i click on this we see this warning line eight the value of the local variable is open isn't used try removing the variable or using it so basically whenever we create a variable and it's not used anywhere else in the code it's just letting us know that look we have this kind of redundant variable here are you going to use it if not why not delete it so if i say print and then is open, then that yellow underline should go away because now we are using it, awesome. And the same would be true for this age variable right here if I printed that, so print and then age, that yellow underline should go away, cool. And now we're just left with this blue underline right here and this is just a little bit of information of how we might improve our code. So it's not necessarily an error and it would still compile, everything would be fine, however, it just gives you a bit of information to say, look, this might be improved. In this case, it's saying use const for final variables initialized to a constant value. Try replacing final with const. So, you know, I said const was a compile time constant. Well, right here, we know the value of this at compile time. We're just setting it in stone. It's 25. So there would be no need for this to be a final. So I could change this to const. And then that error, or rather that underline is going to go away. All right. So I just wanted to let you know what those different colors meant in the console down here or in the documentation panel rather, and also over here inside the editor. All right. So now I'd just like to look at a few different simple math operations we can use with numbers in Dart, much like we can use them in other programming languages. Before we do that, I just want to tidy things up. I'm going to get rid of this constant right here. And then down here, what we'll do is just print out a few different things. So I'm going to say print and then we'll take the age variable and then we'll add 10 to it. So plus sign to add the simple prints and then we'll use age minus 10. So that should be 15, we'll say prints and then we'll do age times 10, that should be 250. And then finally we'll do print and this time we'll do age divided by five, which should be five, right? Because five times five is 25. All right, so let's make sure these work. Hopefully we'll see these numbers down here, 25, which is just this, then 35, 15, 250, and then five. Also, we can get the modulus of a number, so I could say prints age, and then we'll do modulus, which is percent sign, and then we'll do 10. So if I run this, then we should see another number down here. Yep, we see five. So what this does is it divides the number by 10, and then whatever the remainder is, it outputs that, that's the modulus. So if we take 25 and divide that by 10, then we get two remainder five, right? Okay, so let's get rid of those. We can also use something called string interpolation. So I could say print, and then I could use a string, so double quotes, my name is, and what if I wanted to output this name variable after this? Well, what I could do is a space, and then after this, I could use an add sign and I could output the name variable. So if I run this, then we should see the whole string, my name is Mario, right here. But we do get this little information underlined right here saying there's a better way to do this. And it says use interpolation to compose strings and values. So basically that's saying instead of using this, which is concatenation, what we could do is just output the variable inside the string itself. Now to do that, we just need to use a dollar sign and then the name of the variable. So in this case, name. If I run that now, then we should see my name is Mario. So that still works, awesome. Now, when you're accessing properties on some kind of object, we don't have objects here yet, but when you are, so for example, if we had a variable person and then the name was a property on the person, so it would be person.name, right? Then this is not how we output it. We'd have to put all of this value inside curly braces. And this is very much like JavaScript now. So now we'd output the person dot name inside curly braces. And then before that, a dollar sign. Now we get an error because person doesn't exist, but I just wanted to show you how that worked. And in fact, 
if you output this inside curly braces like this, it's still going to work. So we can do that for simple values as well. However, we do get this warning and it says unnecessary braces in a string interpolation. And that's because when we just have a single value like this, we don't need those curly braces and we can just leave it as is. So I could say after this and my age is and then dollar sign age like so. And when it lets me run this again in a second over here, hopefully we should see all of this string in the console. Okay, so sometimes this button does gray out. If it does, just refresh the page and then you should be able to run it. And we can see my name is Mario and it should say, and my age is 25. Awesome. Just one more thing very quickly. I want to show you how we can comment out code in Dart. So if you want to comment out a single line, we can just do two forward slashes like so, and that's going to comment out this. Okay, I'm going to uncomment that now. And then if you want to comment out a chunk of code, so a multi-line comment, we could do a forward slash asterisk, and then where you want to end the comment, do another asterisk and a forward slash. And that's going to comment out all of that code right here. Now you're going to notice two errors, the name and the age right here, and that's because we've commented those out up here. But if we uncomment those again, then the error is going to go away. All right, so I think that's enough of the Dart basics now. In the next lesson, I'd like to talk about types a little bit more in Dart and how we can annotate variables with those types.